David. <laughs> this is a story of a man with a very strange <laughs> fate. Hey, look. It's like I've grown wings.
I didn't see you again this time either. Little Peggy. My name is David Young, former knock with the Boston PD, and now a detective who searches the past. My likes include 100% de agave tequila, my dislikes are mainly drugs and chewing gum.
Two years ago, someone killed my wife. Since then, I've been using every second of my life to solve a case. Using a certain, very special power. My head is full of memories of my wife. And the bullet that robs me of them. What happened in this place? On that day. A gift is an expression of emotion. The person who sends it wants the feelings to be understood. Sometimes, however, those feelings remain in a slightly different form. I call these forgotten treasures mementos. Little Peggy. <laughs> Everyone has their own place to work. A small desk in an office, a molten hot factory, a quiet library, the register in the supermarket, or in the middle of an intersection, in bed on a golf course, a kitchen. For some, it's the whole town. <laughs> From the day she died, this has been my place to work. It's been broken since that day. No results this time either. This case is in the clear.
I don't have time for this right now. I need to clear this case first. I can sleep after that. I have no memories of that day. When I came to, I was already lying in the ICU. The only thing I do remember are the words that little Peggy whispered as she died. Look for D. Who is D? Those words keep spinning in my head. Time, with no compelling evidence, the case hit a dead end. I quit the BPD. However, under the right circumstances, I now have the capability to solve even a dead end case. Everything in my power to find this D. I swear I will. And when I do, oh, Peggy. Amanda? This is Amanda. She just suddenly started living here one day. She sometimes goes out and gets food for us. And that's something of a lifeline for me, as I don't really go outside. Just who she is though, well, my memory holds no answers. Yo, David, everything ship shake?
As you can see, Teddy. Someone definitely got the jump on you. <laughs> Forrest Casey, a detective with the Boston Police Department, and my former partner. He still helps me out nowadays in my search for Dee. He's both a client and a source of information. He gets whatever I need. <clears throat> Women are always trouble. Doesn't matter how old they get, trouble. Fighting with Diana again? <sighs> like you wouldn't believe. Women, men don't stand a chance. Uh, don't come and see me. Actually means get right over here. But then, leave me alone just means, well, leave me alone. How am I meant to make sense of that? Tell me, David, please. Coffee from a different place can be nice once in a while. Once in a while? All the time is more like it. Uh, I was a fool to ask you. Man, Diana is so stupid. Once feared as the mighty grizzly, detective among detectives. Now he's more like a big teddy bear. What's the point of the place? Teddy, what's this? So, tell me, David, have you heard the news about that airplane accident, huh? Access Gate Airways Flight 117, struck by unexplained lightning. No one's talking about anything else right now. We might be looking at the real deal. I've got the good stuff for you this time. Passenger simply vanishing from an aircraft mid-flight. Does that sound possible to you? Antonio Zapatero, otherwise known as Rabbit. He's a courier who only carries real blood. This one promised to provide evidence after being brought to Boston. Evidence that may well have led to the ID of the source of real blood. But then the lightning struck, and in the confusion, he vanished. He escaped somehow? No. When I say vanished, that's pretty much what I mean. Like something out of a magic act. So, clue me in. What makes this one the real deal? The name of the boss he was going to give up? apparently starts with the letter D. This courier might have had evidence revealing the identity of D. So, interested yet? Let me ask you again. A passenger simply vanishing from an aircraft mid-flight. Does that sound possible to you? Almost anything is possible. That's why he brought this to me in the first place, isn't it? Glad we're on the same page. The courier had the evidence with him. I tell you, there's gotta be a third party involved somewhere.
From the evidence I was able to bring, this particular item is the most interesting. The owner of that badge was involved in this incident. No doubt about it. This is a memento. Great. It's yours then. Let's hope it's the last one you'll ever need. David, taking care of yourself is part of your job. So why'd this courier turn witness, anyway? I don't know the details, but apparently he's in fear for his life. He turned himself into the DEA. And they trust him? Uh, I don't know about that, either. But this is information about the mastermind behind... ...real blood. I mean, they're probably saying, can't hurt to hear him out. I feel exactly the same way. So how are the BPD tied up in this? The BPD has the special drugs unit, after all. The team you once belonged to. Once? We have a long history of handling real blood. Our past knowledge can come in handy for cases like this one. What's up, David? Feeling hungry? Okay, good. Let's eat then. I know you too well. You probably have only been drinking alcohol. <laughs> Your badge says detective for a reason, Teddy. <laughs> Go get Amanda. The more the merrier at the dinner table. Tell me, Teddy, what's up with you and Diana? Mm, nothing much. It's just how we roll. New York versus Boston again? That's the root of it. But both of you are originally from New York. I thought you'd be double teaming me. I've been living in Boston for 30 years, man. I'm a Bostonian now, body and soul. Diana doesn't see it that way? Nah. She still got her head stuck right up in New York. So what was it this time? Baseball? Basketball? Not football. Nope. Something bigger. But what's bigger than sports rivalry? Oh, um, this one's bigger. Much bigger. It's all about clam chowder. Clam chowder. Yeah! Clam chowder! No matter how you slice it, Boston has the best clam chowder in the world. You're with me on this, right? 
Right? Huh? Oh, but Diana just can't see it. I have no basis for comparison. What? I've never eaten clam chowder anywhere but Boston. So it's the best in the world by default! Come on. Come on. Come on! Oh, come on, David! Mmm... Sorry. <sighs> I can't help you out. I can't say anything absolute that isn't based on personal experience. I need you on this! All I needed you to say was damn straight! <sighs> What's up, David? Something you needed to ask? There's only one thing I need after work. Tequila. Straight up. Nothing mixed in. Perfect stimulation for my lead filled brain. You always look so happy drinking that. I wish I could have a drink too.
Does it really taste that good? Maybe I'll just try a little. Did you hear about David's wife? Man, they were just married, too. I heard it was revenge for one of his investigations. Sure sounds like the way they operate. Sending a deadly message. What's up? Something you need?
Thanks for all the help. Ha, huh, no problem, David. We're partners. You may have quit the force, but that fact won't change. Hell, if you trace it all the way back, if I hadn't asked you to join up in the first place... Teddy! No, no, no. Don't give me that look, Amanda. I'm just trying to give him a reason to live. Little Peggy. Time has been frozen for me since that day. <laughs> Will I see you this time? <laughs> David. <laughs> this is a story of a man with a very strange fate. Hey, look. It's like I've grown wings. Lavatory. On an airplane. Another successful dive. Touching memories called mementos. Allows me to dive into the past. The day little Peggy was killed, I survived. Miraculously, somehow, I survived. In exchange for losing my memory, I gained this power. Has to be a sign of something. The past will surely tell me the truth. <gasps> Look for the 
I can't get a voice out of my head. Who killed her? Just who is D? The only way to silence that voice is to change my fate. Mind? Witness? Or maybe? from an airplane during a flight? That's impossible. There's got to be something I'm missing. Oh. Oh. Are you okay? Uh. David. Little Peggy? Sir, are you okay? You look like you've just seen a ghost. My apologies, Olivia. You just look so much like an old girlfriend of mine. What's that supposed to mean? Just for a second, I actually thought little Peggy had come back to life. to get back to work sure no problem Olivia just one thing sir you're surely aware that we carry a passenger list aboard huh memorized it have you we don't take kindly to stowaways if that's what you are a stowaway am I well miss Olivia Jones Maybe you're on to me. The courier is gonna vanish, is he? No matter what trick he uses. I'll get to the bottom of this.
Is anything the matter? You mentioned the passenger list? Oh, I'm sure it's just my mistake. You really do have it memorized? I thought I did, but I'm still new at this job. It's probably just my mistake. I'm sorry I said anything. You called me a stowaway, didn't you? My apologies for that, sir. What did you mean? Nothing really. No deep meaning. Nothing at all? I must apologize if I have upset you. I didn't mean to. I'm truly very sorry. Is it true that there's a United States Marshal aboard this flight? Why would you ask such a thing? I heard some of the other crew talking. Let's hope she buys that. I have no idea. No idea at all? Isn't the passenger list burned into your memory? Even if I did know, I couldn't tell you. Why would you care to know, may I ask? Oh, uh, just a passing interest. Hmm. You're a United States Marshal. You're transporting a key witness, but reading a completely different file. Does that just mean you're passionate about your job? Or is there something else going on here? You, what are you doing here? Derek Buchanan, United States Marshal. The owner of the memento I used to get here, along with a name that starts with D. Two signs I can't ignore. I said I'd kill you if I saw you again, didn't I, boy? It seems we've already met somewhere. I can tell you the details, but it might take a while. I don't want your life story. Do I need to spell it out to you? Get lost. <laughs> I'm afraid that doesn't work for me. I've got business with him. Antonio Rabbit Zapatero, a dealer of the drug called Real Blood. Apparently, he also has evidence that could lead to the identity of Dee. If that's true, it makes him the most important person on this flight. You really have a death wish, don't you? Yet you might be the one who dies. How dare you? You should get out as quickly as you can. I'll keep the fountain pen to remember you by. Ugh! <laughs> 
God damn it! I want to talk to him. No way. Get lost. I need to do something about this tough guy first, then. Snow on the front, cherry blossoms on the back. They change them according to the season? It isn't totally atrocious, but hardly avant-garde now, is it? I'd expect no less flying coach, of course. Would it have killed them to use a little real stitching? Honestly! And who might you... I don't ask for opinions from the uninspired. Suki, baby, what do you think? Dress all the seats white, then crown them with a single... Stag beetle? Oh, yes! Or maybe change all these to black lights, but not too dramatic. Just play Does straight. your mannequin ever reply? She's not a mannequin! She's my partner. She is? Yes, she is. I'm Duncan, and this is Suki. We're top fashion designers, the both of us. <sighs> <sighs> This guy's also a deep. Some people just don't get it, no matter how many times you tell them. My bad, I'm sure. Can I ask you something? I don't need your opinion. After all, I have Suki. The sunglasses in particular are strikingly progressive, don't you think? This is... Oh, oh God! The epitome of my next theme. <laughs> the cart that was blocking the aisle has been moved. Now I can expand my search area a little wider. These look like souvenirs from the trip. Four thousand five hundred thirty-nine? Four thousand five hundred forty? There's something fishy going on here. Is there a problem? The west side window. 
The sun's setting there, so that's the west. The west side window, the angle of the setting sun, that is the left side in regard to our direction of travel. That window right there, that window made a noise, didn't it? You heard it, right? I have to inform Dr. Johnson. Going to Washington, D.C. by plain nonsense. Absolute nonsense. She has her name written on everything she owns. She's a D2? This is so bad. This plane is going down. It's okay. There's no problem. Oh, shut your mouth. There were lightning strikes on the flight over. There's most definitely a problem. The window will keep on creaking. Suddenly, it will break. We'll turn like crazy. Lightning will hit us again. A direct hit. Lightning? Yes, lightning. It'll blow an engine up this time, that's for sure. And what happens then, Mr. No Problem? This plane won't be flying anymore. You agree with me now, right? This plane is going down. No, this plane didn't crash. What? Did it crash? Did it? How the fuck would you know that? Who the hell do you think Is you there are? a problem, oh. madam? This, this dumb shit here is fucking with me. I told him the noise the window was making is bad news. I told him. Well, madam, I'm sure you did. <laughs> Very well. I just, uh, Please allow me to handle this. Unbelievable. Well, well. So Let me I, see now. Mr. Young, wasn't it? I have to admit, I didn't expect to ever see you again. I can't imagine why. First meeting is a past that hasn't happened yet. You are quite the stubborn mule. The type who won't stay dead even if he gets killed, maybe. Oh, I wonder. <laughs> if you're going to cause trouble, I may have to eject you from the game. <laughs> Trouble? Me? Your watch was about to fall off. It looks expensive, so I didn't think you'd want to lose it. I'm just a polite, helpful passenger. Look, ref, if you're gonna bench anyone, bench her. And I heard it, and if you don't listen to me, I don't know what <sighs> I'll do. Just listen. Now I've got three people with names that start with D. Deborah Anderson, Duncan, and Derek Buchanan. To be honest, I still don't know if any one of them is who I'm after. But there's a bag load of room for suspicion. In that right, little Peggy. You were a nice gentleman. Madam, you think I I'm just some you complainer? Nothing some of the... lawsuit seeker? Do you? This is completely unacceptable. Completely unacceptable! Show me your name tag. Show it to me! Employee number D-3582. I've burnt it into my forebrain. Once I'm home, yes, I am going to sue you. I have never been so mad in my life. <laughs> I, I'm just 
practicing what I preach. As you I wish, madam. However, perhaps if we Is change there your any seat way I could you. talk to your manager? I'm sure the sound I've of windows would not annoy you in, say, and every... business class. Hmm? The seats I've... are very fluffy, too. Business? That's, a uh, class? It is, madam. I could show you to your seat. One where I can't hear the windows? No <laughs> nasty window noises in business. <laughs> well, I... If you'll just allow me to explain the procedure for your upgrade. I suppose that could be okay. <laughs> you never... What the fuck? In the instant I saw that big man, the scar on my forehead started to throb. It's never happened before. What's going on here? Metro M. That's the subway in DC. The Boston MBTA uses a T symbol, so this ticket was used in DC. Snow, cherry blossoms. A seasonal theme, I'm guessing. Metro ticket. Very interesting panda design. It's already used.
There's nothing here. Snow and cherry blossoms. A seasonal theme, I'm guessing. out of place. There's nothing here. Hmm. What evil might I find here? The designs in business class are just as atrocious. Why do you have a mannequin with you? She is not a mannequin! How many times do I have to tell you? Look! She clearly has a seatbelt on. Oh, Suki, you have the perfect waistline. An unbelievably smooth skin. A human woman could never hope to achieve such perfection. Do you remember the two sitting in the seats at the very back? Whoever do you mean? When you came and educated me about the seat covers? The two who were directly behind us. I'm terribly sorry, but most of the time, I only ever see Suki. I have no interest in anyone else, I assure you. So, this is the era of avant-garde? 
Hmm, that's not quite right. It is... Oh, my God! That difference is everything. You have to embrace it. Uh, okay. I have to say, and stop me if you've heard this before, your choice in fashion is terrible. An affront to art itself. I never thought I'd meet a man who can walk around happily dressed like that. Ugh. Hey, it isn't that bad, right? Oh, please. It's that bad. Looks like you don't even have the right clothes to go shopping for clothes. No, go ahead. Tell me how you really feel. Uh, I can't open my heart to those with no understanding of art. After all, spending unproductive time sullies my brain, <laughs> damages my creativity. I don't have a leg to stand on with this guy, but I also can't just pass him over. Not with a name that starts with a D. Mm. You know, I'll give you a chance, though. Prove you can get with the dress code, and we may be able to chat. Just one item. Wear one single item that's cutting edge, and come see me again. Oh, my God! This sounds like a real drag. I wonder if there's anything tucked away in my closet that might help. Marshal, I want to ask you something. I've got nothing to say to a man who abandoned his duty. Abandoned? Am I wrong? You quit the force, right? How do you know that? <laughs> I'm nothing like you. I'd never run from anything. I'd pursue my targets to the end of the earth. Never give up. I haven't given up. There are some cases they can't be solved from inside the machine. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd agree with that. If, oh, let's say, the President of the United States were here, well, uh, then I'd hear you out. See, I'm a real patriot. I'd be respectful in front of the President. Hmm. I don't see him on board. So get lost. You think you can get rid of me? Okay. I'll play your game. I'll find the president and stick him right in your arrogant face. If possible, I'd really like to have a word with him. The hell you will. I'll leave you alone. Once I've got what I want from him. Really, I will. I don't care rat's ass about what you need or what you'll do for me, boy. How's security for the transport? Nice and tight? You trying to say something? I'm worried that you might let this guy just slip away from you. Even up here, it might happen. Mind your own business, boy.
God. Where did I put it? What are you looking for? Oh, it's nothing, sir. Hmm. If you can't tell me, then allow me to tell you what it is. What do you mean, sir? The item you lost is... The crew manual, I bet. Uh, of course it isn't. Yeah, you've been struggling with the equipment here for a while now. Don't you think it would be better to have it? That... I'm not sure about. Whatever the reason, she's hiding something. I might get more out of her if I find the manual. Is that Cheney fellow always like that? Like what? I don't know what you mean. He seems... dangerous. Dangerous? Superficially polite. Like he's looking down on others. Not at all. Philip is a valued member of the crew. He's always the first to handle the difficult passengers, too. You mean, he handles the people looking for a lawsuit? No, I didn't say that. You sure did. No, sir. I only said difficult passengers. So, a difficult passenger might be that woman with the life jacket on? What does that mean, sir? Exactly what I said. Who is she to you? It's a personal matter, but one I cannot overlook. I cannot discuss other passengers. Just a little would be okay, surely. <sighs> right now, you're the most difficult passenger on this flight. Who's that giant in business class? What giant? I saw him come out of the galley. You can't miss him, surely. If you're making fun of me, I think I've had enough of it. You called me a sto- My What did you mean? Nothing really. Nothing at all. I must apologize. I'm truly very sorry. That's one fashionable band. Not bad for a gift from Washington, D.C.
There's nothing here. Have you honed your fashion senses? Sorry, but it isn't really art that I wanted to talk to you about. So why are you bothering me? Art is the only thing that Suki and I have any interest in at all. Are those sunglasses art? Art that's about to happen, yes. This avant-garde style. I hate to say it, but time is moving fast. The era of retro and military is coming to an end. Finally. This is the cutting edge. This is avant-garde. Where do you get the inspiration for your fashion designs? I find it hard to believe you come up with them while sober. <laughs> I don't get my inspiration from anywhere. It can arrive most violently. But it won't come to you by just sitting around and waiting. You have to desperately chase it down. Chase and chase like a dog gone wild. Even a mundane creature like you will understand. Eventually. That's not really what I was asking. Then you need to make yourself clearer. I want to know about... doping. Like, maybe your inspiration came from the use of... certain drugs? Doping? Drugs? You think I would cheat my way to the top? I don't need drugs! Why would I? I have Suki. Let me ask you about something else, then. Has that giant been on this flight since takeoff? Giant? What giant? Are you sure you aren't the one doping? What are you doing here? <laughs> this big fella. I've met him before somewhere, but I can't remember where. My scar is desperately trying to tell me that he knows something. Antonio Zapatero! 
There you are! You're this young I've been hearing so much about. Not like I'm gonna spill the slop on thee, though. What be in there for me? Hey, papi! <laughs> so how about... You die, fucker! <laughs> Wait! There's no way to stare at Trooper's hair! <laughs>
Olivia? Rabbit? The courier, he... vanished? Rabbit would never hide in here. Marshal, are you okay? What's with the attitude? I'm only asking because I was worried. You'd think nothing happened at all. I don't need your jabber, boy. Derek Buchanan. I'm not sure why, but he seems determined to ignore me. About your daughter. Does she look like you? If she does, well, that's gotta be one unhappy kid. Voted most likely to be carved from stone. No prom date for her. Just having you as a father is enough to scare the boys off, I bet. But that's a surprise. You're the last person I'd expect to be carrying a picture of your family. Listen up. I don't know who you are. But if you want to keep sucking down air, never talk to me again. As for your other inquiry, 
My daughter does not need the likes of you worrying about her. She looks like her mother. Thank you very much. Uh, 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 Marshal Buchanan doesn't know who I am? Uh, There's something very odd going on here. But just what is it? Marshal. Hmm. I'll be slapped with a match penalty if I push my luck any further. I'd better look for another way before I'm sent off for good. <laughs> Think to try this. I must be getting tired. Oh, ma chérie, I know. You must have been so scared. How is my Suki? Okay. There'll be champagne as soon as we arrive in D.C. Ooh, I think some Chardonnay might be nice. Didn't your mannequin just break? Hey! Excuse me! She's Suki, not a mannequin! Therefore, she most certainly cannot ever just break. Do you intend to make an enemy of the entire fashion industry? No. That mannequin got totally wrecked. Tut-tut! Say another word, mister, and I shall unleash my anger! Okay, you win. Forget I even asked about you, Manny. <sighs> my bad. No more about Suki. That's right. She's not a mannequin. We can forget this ever happened. Of course, us being top fashion designers, we're never going to remember you anyway. <laughs> I don't do autographs. I'm here on my private time. When did you become a military maniac? This is a fashion, you heathen. Retro and military, it's called. Both Suki and I are completely anti-war, of course. Okay. But what I really wanted to know was, when did you change your clothes? <sighs> Progress cannot be stopped. When we changed is not what is important. Rather, the question should be, when can we change? Indeed, just look. The fashion we have on right now is already headed toward obscurity. It's imminent, like fluttering petals. At any moment, new inspiration is going to just explode into my brain. Like, who? 
Oz and Vaughn. <laughs> yes. Your exclamation just lifted the fog from my brain in a flash. Now, say it with me. Oh, God. This will be my next theme. Your mannequin, I mean, is Suki really okay? You're so persistent. Look at her smooth, perfect body. She doesn't have a mark on her. Hmm. Sue. Oh, you're so good. Oh, my Suki. Please stop staring like that. You're scaring poor Suki. She really hates beardy, scruffy animals like you most of all. Can I ask you something? How many spare Sukis do you have? Hey! There's no spare for her. She's unique in all the world. And one of a kind to me. Hmm. Sue. Oh, you're so good. Oh, my Suki. Suki, you are just too lovely. If I were to lose you, I doubt I could go on living. This does look like the real Suki. So just what's going on here? You've got red powder on your clothes. What is it? A <gasps> uh, 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 chew! Oh, excuse me. Now then, uh, where exactly is this red powder on my clothing? I don't see anything at all. <sighs> An elite fashion designer. And a mysterious powder? My instincts as a former narcotics detective tell me something's up. I'll question him and find out more. Have you heard of... real blood? Oh, of, of course I have. It's a cocktail containing tomato juice. Uh, not even close. Oh. You must mean that old cult movie, or that specialist retailer aimed at uh, teenagers. Is this just bluster? Is he trying to hide something? I need to find another way in. Brilliant lights cast deep shadows. What's that supposed to mean? Musicians, artists, designers. Top clientele for drug pushes. I don't deny it. And you're one of them too? I don't need that stuff. I've got Suki. There's nothing that can possibly stimulate me more than her. Comparing her to the effects of mere chemicals? Synthetic drugs? You may as well just slap her in the face. D? What kind of question is that? I'm investigating something. Even if I knew about it, 
I wouldn't necessarily tell you, would I? He makes a good point. I can't approach this head on. Yours is a world of trends, isn't it? Well, there are trends in drugs, too. You're sensitive to trends, right? You know what I'm talking about. Real blood. The ultimate drug. Considered the final and best of the blood series. As the name might suggest, it's a bright red powder. Just like the suspicious powder I saw on your clothing. You seem quite desperate to paint me as a junkie. But you're just overthinking things. The substance you question is nothing like that silly, real blood. It's far more wonderful, revolutionary, like a completely new age. For now, well, just call it D. D? What? I... He makes a cannibal. Tell me more about this new age. Mm -hmm. hm. No comment. If it's all legit, surely you can tell me about it. Mm. It isn't time to reveal anything yet. You'll hear about it soon enough, along with the rest of the world. So you're planning on spreading a new age called D across the entire world simultaneously? <laughs> no comment. Hmm. This guy could be a lot more dangerous than he looks. I'll try taunting him a little. I've worked it out. The D of this new age is the D from Duncan. In other words, you want to make your own name the symbol of this new age. The whole world will be under the spell of the red powder that bears your name. But that isn't art. It's just attention seeking. The desire for conquest. Just another wannabe dictator. Is that what Suki wants? Say whatever you like. It's not like you can stop me. This guy is tougher than I thought. He knows I don't have anything on him, okay? I'll slap him with some proof. Something he can't run away from. All this talk of a new age called D, though. I just hope my bad feeling about all this is way off the mark. says Boston quite like this. There must be a baseball fan on board. Boston versus New York. Pretty good seats, too. Of course, it's been used. <laughs> Things don't come that easy.
hands and feet are cramping up. What are you doing that for? You there. Perfect timing. I can't take it anymore. Take what? What is Deborah talking about? That lightning strike electrified the floor and handrails. So I'm doing my best not to touch them. <laughs> but I can't take it anymore. My arms, legs, neck, back, everything is screaming in pain. <laughs> I need to try and calm it down. striking an airplane. Crazy, huh? Do you think this plane is okay? First, squeaking windows. And now seats and floors are electrified? I'm almost impressed by your capacity to worry about the mundane. Hold it! What was that about the windows? They were squeaking, right? Squeaking! The windows! You're saying the windows on this bucket squeak? What? You're pulling my leg. If the windows were really squeaking, why, we'd all be dead by now. That lightning strike would have come in through the cracked window. We'd have smashed into the sea, its surface harder than concrete. It's like Dr. Johnson always says. Fall from an airplane, and you'll die. So just keep your fear-mongering to yourself. There certainly doesn't seem to be any counting in the notes. What's going on here, then? You also take notes on suspicious people, right? That's right. There's you, of course, and I've got notes on that guy with the mannequin. Oh, I've got his number. He's one of them object sexuals. I'll have to take your word for that. It's a term applied to individuals who fall in love with inanimate objects. Come on, you've heard of it. A type of paraphilia. It's like Dr. Johnson always says, love has no boundaries. What about the guy with the scar on his forehead? Stony face, in business class? Oh yes, workaholic, textbook. He's got it bad too. He's either using his work to run away from something or work itself is his reason for living. Reason? For living. It's like Dr. Johnson always says, it doesn't matter what it is, just find a reason to live. leg. If the windows were really squeaking, why, we'd all be dead by now. That lightning strike would have come in through the cracked window. We'd have smashed into the sea, its surface harder than concrete. It's like Dr. Johnson always says, fall from an airplane and you'll die. So just keep your fear-mongering to yourself. There certainly doesn't seem to be any counting in her notes. What's going on here then?
a domestic flight. No large bags. The front is a cherry blossom path, and snow is on the back. When did that change over? The cherry blossoms and snow are switched, no mistake. So what does that mean? Cherry blossoms and snow are switched, no mistake. So what does that mean? There's nothing here. The cherry blossoms and snow are switched, no mistake. So what does that mean? There's nothing here. The cherry blossoms and snow are switched, no mistake. So what does that mean? When did you move to this seat? When indeed, young Mr. Young. So funny you would ask. What does that mean? If time changes, so too does place. Time is of the essence. You of all people should understand. Cutlery has to be stainless. Don't you agree? That lightning strike. How did you know about it? Before it even happened. Don't tell me you can control lightning strikes. Your ability to look is not bad. But you need 
to be able to observe a little more carefully. What are you looking at? You can't get rid of me like that. Mr. Young, just looking is not enough. You must observe. I'm sure you understand the difference. I don't have time for a lecture. Just answer my question. I thought that I did. Observe carefully and you'll get it. Did you observe? The engine isn't damaged. You have good observational skills. You already know the answer. Am I correct? Do you know what happened to the courier? It might be said that I do, and it might be said that I don't. If time changes, so too does place. Time is of the essence. Either way, Mr. Young, you cannot ask me to do your job for you. What about that female member of the cabin crew? You mean Olivia Jones. You saw her. Did she remind you of little Peggy? <gasps> What's going on here? What have you done to me? Can you finally see them? These are things with a special meaning for you. What are you talking about? Catch them. If you can, you may discover something about her. Clover represent your memory of her. Don't let them slip away.
something? What are you talking about? Mr. Young, I've placed a memory left by her in your house. That memory belongs to you, Mr. Young. talking about leaving something in my house a memory with her clover little peggy could it be what do you know about little peggy blonde blue eyes and a mole by her eye did she smell of the same soap, too? Just how much do you know? Everything you told me all of it yourself, Mr. Young. Your Overlaying your, your memories of little Peggy onto Olivia, aren't you? Just who are you? It was a snowy. Night. I remember it very well. Is Amanda doing okay? Amanda? You know her too? Her well being is a Good thing. A good indication of your own well being, Mr. Young. like I'm not even here. Oh dear. Control will be an issue if I can't find it. Huh. Sir, can I help you with anything? Where's Olivia? Excuse me, sir. Exactly which Miss Olivia are you searching for? Olivia Jones. She's a member of the crew, just like you are. I'm very sorry, sir, but she isn't aboard this flight. Come on. Did that lightning strike you too? She was right here a moment ago. In any case, you need to contact Logan Airport immediately. Tell them we have an emergency up here. Also, get the BPD to send some cops to the airport. Detective Forrest Kaysen in particular. Give him my name and you'll have no problems. Well, excuse me, sir. Are you hoping to use this confusion for something nefarious? 
If so, I'll have to stop him. Next Damn it. time, I'll break more than you watch. My most humble apologies, Mr. David Young. This incident has us all a little riled up, I'm sure. Huh? I'll make the call about the suspicious person immediately. To our destination. Ronald Reagan International Airport. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to work. Well, looks fine. What a beautiful sunset. It reminds me of the day I proposed. <laughs> Little Peggy. I'll find who killed you. I will. I've collected all the puzzle pieces. The west side window. Will be champagne as soon as we arrive in these. I'm very sorry, sir. I don't know who you are. That's it. This piece of the past has been solved. Marshall. Are you really sentimental enough to hold on to a pen that can't even write? Unexpected. Most unexpected. You seem quite different from the man I first imagined you to be. But that doesn't mean you're totally free from suspicion. I told you The same uh, trick won't work God twice. Damn it! Although it's still the first time for you.
The Fenway Park ticket was a used ticket. What? The seat cover pattern is cherry blossom and snow. What are you rambling about? The destination is in the other direction. The sun can be seen from the windows on the right side. In other words, the aircraft is flying south. Explain yourself clearly! I am David Young, a private detective who also collaborates with the BPD. Now you, Derek Buchanan, I consider you suspicious. If you are the one I'm after, you're gonna remain heavily involved in my investigation from now on. So let me give you this warning. I'll do whatever it takes to achieve my goal. I'll never give up. Even if it means I have to get in your way. So be ready for that. Oh, one other thing. Something I probably ought to mention. According to the BPD files, you get killed while transporting the courier known as Rabbit. to be killed? Antonio Zapatero and Olivia Jones. They vanished right in front of my eyes. Literally, vanished. But they didn't vanish at all. They were never on this flight. This isn't the AG Flight 117 of Boston. It's a different aircraft heading for Washington. In other words, they didn't vanish. I moved. It must have happened at that moment. I used the broken fountain pen to come further back in time. feel anything from either one anymore. David. Why do you shave your beard every day? <laughs> it was just starting to grow out. It's such a waste. Little Peggy. What should I do? 